Okay, so welcome to this uh, morning's uh, Fight Property Show. We're talking about selling in winter, how to play the season's strengths to move home in spring. Now, often it's overlooked the fact that winter actually technically runs from December the 22nd to the 20th of March. And everybody forgets that, don't they, Perry? Because I'm like, I'm like, winter's over once December's finished and Christmas. Exactly. Once you've had Christmas and you're into New Year, you kind of think you're into spring and you're not. <laughs> hmm. So how do we, how, how do you play the seed and strength to move home in spring? I mean, you know, you did a perfect example the other day and I, and I, and I want to talk about that. This is a classic for repricing and re-strategizing. There's a lot of people on the market now. I've been on the market for nine months for another agent, hadn't it? Yeah. And you put it on at the same price. And then the, it, you, you were getting a bit of traction. This was no viewers, by the way, with other with other agents for nine months. No viewers, months no over. offers. No viewers, no, no viewers, offers. No offers, anything like that for nine months with other agents. We take it on same price. We get a few interest. We get some interest in that as well. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we're into realign the price. So why do we realign the price, Perry? We realign the price to open up to a new market. So people who may not have looked at that price point, People, when they search on Rightmove, et cetera, they have a banner that they work to in numbers, don't they? So they'll only ever search to that number. And actually, yeah. a property sometimes can be beyond that number. And just bringing it into that number opens up to a new audience, which generates the foot traffic, which generates the interest, the competition, and allows you to then drive the price back up. Yeah. So what you did exactly was that you drove the price back up. So you reintroduced a realignment to a different price point. Yep. So you brought the price point down, the initial offering, and then you pushed it back up to more than what it was on before it. Yep. We actually exceeded the number it started at. And that proves to be every single time that that strategy of realignment works. Every mm -hmm. single time. And there's so many people out there uh, that think to themselves immediately that, if I'm putting my price down or I'm revising my price to a downward price point, I'm actually giving money away. You're exactly. not. You're reintroducing it to a different audience to push the price back up and actually get more than what was on originally, where they never got any other offers from the other agent for over mm -hmm. nine months. I think the key with that as well, though, you use the word agent there and, you know, not making this about us as individuals, but actually it does depend on what your agent is doing for you. And is your agent actually got the strategy, the marketing structure? Yes, I never the promotional thought. Yeah, the promotional structure of it as well. Do they actually know how to go out and try and target a new audience? Or do they just say, you need to reduce the price, there's no shifting, and that's it? You know, we didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, one, one club approach, isn't it? It's like, the yeah, you know, the chance yeah, stood up and says, what chance have I got of just using base rates as the, as the factor to curb inflation every single time? I've only just like send me for a game of golf for one club. 100% Jim and it's about having that understanding the flexibility and knowing your market as well but actually also knowing your database you know yeah. do you know your customers that are looking for a property that is like that now maybe the location doesn't quite fit maybe there's something slightly different but actually it was a beautiful home someone has come in and bought it they're moving to the area and it's about understanding what they want they actually wouldn't have initially looked at that we would look have you seen this house it's exactly what you're looking for but it doesn't come geographically with what you said you wanted, but actually it's a great location. It is countryside. They wanted a bit more inland rather than seaside, but it ticked all the boxes. Yeah, but it does, yeah. Your agent's got to farm that for you. You can't just wait on someone going, hang on, I'll just have a little look at Zoopla and I'll have a wee look at right move and see if, if I can find that house. That's leading, <laughs> it, it, leading it to chance, isn't it? It's yeah. not actually getting in front of the right audience is, is, is the main, main issue. A lot of people actually just believe that being on right move, Zoopla, and prime location is the be all and end all and it's all going to do the work for it if that was mm -hmm. the case then why did you get the agent in the first place you may as well have just gone on through some sort of doorstep.co.uk for 99 quid and done it yourself uh, and you would have done just as good a job so you're, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right it's a lot to do with strategy it's a lot to do with digital marketing but more importantly it's a lot to do with negotiation especially with the fact that you had shaved effectively i think it was about fifteen thousand off the price point when you realigned it and then you pushed yeah. it up to twenty thousand more yeah the client was, the client was absolutely delighted and yeah. actually the client reacted very similarly to that example you just gave when people tell you when we talk about price realignment people think they're giving money away and the client at first was like oh hang on a minute i don't want to reduce my price that's not going to yeah. get me where i need to be and it was when we actually explained that strategy then the evidence came but again your agent can't just 
align it and then do nothing. You've got to be proactively trying to get somebody yeah. over that threshold because that's what will then do it. And that's what we did in that equation. I've got to admit it works time and time again, doesn't it? And I don't I don't understand why nobody else uses the strategy. But you know, it's 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 for us to use, it's for us to benefit from, it's for our sellers to benefit from as well. Um okay, so let's get into the meat of this, right? Okay, selling in winter from December to mid-March, thereabouts. If you want to move home in spring, winter is definitely a time to get live on the market. But does anyone actually buy at this time of year? Well, yeah, they do. Because <laughs> I've sold a house on Christmas Eve, I've sold a house yeah. on Christmas Day, I've sold a house on Boxing Day, I've sold a house mm -hmm. on New Year's Eve for Hogmanay, mm -hmm. and I've sold a house just last year on New Year's Day. The deal is done to prove that point. Yes, people still do look for houses, and it's a golden opportunity to take advantage of things like Boxing Day bounce and also other activity when you come in after New Year as well. And people begin to, the, the market begins to grow and more buyers and uh, begin to look a lot more on properties all over. I think that's mm -hmm. the most important point. It's the buyers we're actually focusing on. It's not really the sellers. You know, this yeah. is why most sellers actually wait till the spring. Oh, I want my flowers to be in full bloom. It's like, great. And then you'll compete with everybody else with their flowers in full bloom because that's when all yeah. the all properties come on the market. So why would you not come on the market when there's less properties coming on? In Fife, for example, 125 to 140 properties get put on every single week. It's down at 90 and 80 just now. You've yeah. got a golden opportunity. You've got less people to compete with. Therefore, you've got more buyers to take advantage of and actually get that price point you really want, especially for people who are still in the market right now. If you've been in the market for quite a while, the realignment strategy is a perfect strategy. And we can tell you more about that if you contact us direct. It's true that activity levels are definitely lower, mainly down to people waiting until spring to put their homes up for sale, as I said. But it gives a winter, it gives winter sellers a number of advantages. Here are the distinct advantages in a nutshell in these three things. Fewer homes on the market, as I said before, and the, uh, more eyes on your on, on, on yours from the year's biggest online audience, uh, with daily visits to right move reaching over 25 million over the holidays. We people see ourselves even the other way. Yeah, we see it on our website, do you? Mm -hmm. Yep, it goes mental. Um, only the most motivated buyers brave the elements to come out for viewings. That's great because it qualifies people straight away, which means interest tends to be serious with very few window shoppers. Yeah. You can also use the mood and the magic, the frosty modern months to create an atmosphere of seasonal warmth that's impossible to resist, especially if people have got log burners. It just paints that picture when you walk in the door. See when you walk into the living room or the lounge or anything like that, and the log burner's roasting away, and it's like you get that full, you get that hit of that that heat that mm -hmm. comes from there. And then you kind of just think to yourself, oh, God, I could just sit here forever in this. It's just perfect. Yeah, 100%. And actually, you get some nice winter sunshine and skies as well. So I was at a property the other day, and the sun was just coming to that lowness at the end of the day. And the sky was pink, and the garden had a glow about it. OK, it was nippy cold. But once we were in the garden, then we went into the property, then you got the warmth of the house again. So actually you were getting warmth outside and inside in a strange way. So it was all those emotions that we talk about that make someone Absolutely. buy that house kick into play, don't they? So if, if, if you're planning ahead to move in spring, uh, so you need to do something now, this is going to be for you. We're going to give away a lot of secrets in this show. Um, a lot of trade secrets basically are unique to us and not to any other agent, more than likely. And you always think to yourself, well, everybody would know that. And, you know, but common sense is not common. Mm -hmm. So this is the time now, I would say, to cozy up. <laughs> uh, winter viewings are about to about making your viewers feel instantly cozy and comfortable. So that all they want to do is relax, uh, defrost and enjoy their visit. So what things do we need to do, Perry? To, to get people to relax and enjoy their visit. What for, for a buyer, for a seller out there especially, what do they need to do to help their buyers mm -hmm. probably probably want to buy their house? What do they need? Because yeah. remember, this is all emotionally led. Mm -hmm. So it's all about what do you what do you need to do as a seller? If you're tuning in as a seller, what do you need to do as a seller to get the buyer over the line? Yeah. There, there are many things and the emotional parts what we talk about and that falls into what they're seeing, of course but it's what they're smelling, what they're hearing, what they're sensing when they get in the property. Before we get into that, though, one of the things I want to just point out as well is people talk about 
a lot of the clients that I'm speaking to just now, not even just buyers, but also sellers are saying, I want to move in spring, but they're not wanting to put the property on until spring. And I'm thinking if you're waiting for that then and you're not going to put it on until spring, you're not moving until summer. So if you want to move in spring, you need to go now. So tips to help you with that. Keep your heating on low. I know it sounds like you might want to actually wrap the heating right up, but that's the worst thing you can do because you don't want yeah. it to be too hot. You want it to feel naturally comfortable. So keep your heating on low or invest in a smart thermostat as well that you can control remotely. I've got a client that does that at the moment. As soon as we're going to do viewings and she gets a confirmation email, she sends me a wee note to say, I've just popped the heating on. And it's fantastic. Yeah. So that works for her. So that's a real good way of doing it as well. It gives a warm and welcoming temperature as well, even at short notice, like I say, without actually making the property feel stuffy. It's because quite with important a lot as well. Of it actually yeah. smell. Because when you think about a buyer is going to walk in the door and they're going to have all their wool winter woolies on and they're not going to take everything off. Most no. of them just keep them on as they're walking around the property. So if you've got the property with heating overpowering, they're going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Definitely. Other thing to do as well, it's all about making your buyer feel comfortable. As you say, this is not about the seller at all. This is about getting the buyer to buy. When they come to property, especially at this winter months, it's mucky outside, isn't it? So make sure that you've got a doormat as well, because people kind of, once you open the door, they stand there and they panic if they don't see something to kind of wipe their feet on. So they do, they get uncomfortable, they get distracted. And before they've even come over the door, they're getting a bit of a negative feel about the house. Yeah, anxiety. Then also thinking about how am I going to not put dirt on this person's carpet? Yeah. Um, it's also actually worth investing in, in, in book covers. You know, you yeah. get off, off Amazon quite easily or any other respectable uh, trader, um, but mainly you get just shoe covers uh, for people. Make it easy on themselves because often it's like, well, I'll just get them and take their boots off at the door. Ah, that's OK. But then how do they get out the back door to the garden? Yeah. They then have to take their boots through. So, yeah. you know, you might actually want to invest in a bit more heavy duty um, shoe covers um, than the normal yeah. run of the mill stuff. Because, they're, 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 I mean, a couple of wears and they're, they're just ripped. Um, so yeah. I would definitely invest in that. We do that all the time. Yeah, we. Do, I mean, absolutely. I mean, all of our agents have boot covers in the car. Mm -hmm. um, we have masks in the car as well because people feel uncomfortable with that sometimes winter months. But it's important for actually your agent to provide. Your agent should really provide you as a seller with some covers anyhow. And if you yeah. need more, you ask your agent for them. So they're a good thing to have. Even shoe trays, if people are wanting to take their shoes off, they can pop them in a wee shoe tray, um, mm -hmm. especially if it's like damp or muddy footwear, because people are wearing boots and things at this time of year. Um, again, we talk about getting the house looking nice and decluttering the front halls all the time and getting the coat racks empty, just the one coat, not yeah. your wardrobe, just the one pair of shoes, Jim, not 10. <laughs> Like you always do. <laughs> <No way>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's important, actually, when people are coming to create that opportunity for them to discard their coats and scarves and hat if they want to. So, you know, have the odd placed hook at the front door is always handy. You, um, could, also everyone... have, you could also have stinky shoes. You know, yeah. the fact is your trainers and stuff like that, you don't know. It's like it's the, the nose blind thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. And the fact that you, you've left all your shoes at the front door and then somebody walks in, the smell is overpowering. Yeah, so it maybe is great. worth investing as well as uh, maybe gel gel fresheners. You know, you get them at home bargains and stuff like that. And you get for one fifty for three of them. You yeah. just pull the fronts off them, put them behind the door, and it gives off a nice aroma. Things like lavender and cotton, uh, stuff like that. Stuff that you, you know instantly you see in adverts that are the yeah. uh, epitomise freshness. You know, in people's yeah. minds. So that's the sort of things to use. I would say. Absolutely. So definitely you need to do that because you want everyone to feel that they've just come home when they come into your house. You yeah. don't want them to feel an uncomfortableness. So it's about creating that image in their minds of I could see myself doing this every day. Make it comfortable for them. Um, if you've got an open log burner, like we said, or an open fire, light it up and get that crackling display because it really does make a big, big difference. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's all about timing because you never know how your log burner is going to work out, but it does create a really nice feeling. But the thing is, if you don't have one of those, one of the things you can do if you've got a television as well, go into YouTube. You get the crackling fire videos and that on YouTube as well. You can just put it on your TV. I know it's a bit of falseness and a bit cheesy sounding. Elaine but actually, does it. It's an illusion. Elaine, Elaine does it and it works. I walk into the room and I'm thinking, God, I've got a log burner in, this, in, the, <laughs> in the corner of the room. And if you just hear the crackle, 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 and it's, it, is, it is that emotional. It's, it's like hearing your the ultimate song that will get you up on the dance floor. You know, that yeah. sort of song, this is my song, and you're straight yeah. up in the dance floor, but all these endorphins rush to your head and you get a huge rush out of it. And it's the same sort of thing, just the crackling of the yeah. fire gives people that that boost. 
They don't know that's happening, but it does yeah. give them that boost, that emotional boost as well. It makes them feel, makes them feel definitely at home. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get that creation of they want to be there. Um, I think it's good as well in regards to how you want to dress the house. That's that's me. <laughs> Accessorising. So soft, fluffy sheepskin rugs are good. Natural wood throw, you know, to throw on your floors if you've got natural wood or tiles or something. That looks really nice. But nice warm colours as well. Dual tones like sapphire blues, emerald greens, ruby reds. And especially at this time of year, because you've got that Christmas feel as well. So you yeah. might not want to be putting your tree up because you don't want to distract people with looking at the trees and the clutter that that may give. But it's nice and warm and to have those colours. So, again, it's about creating that illusion. Um, but classic tones like your oranges and your operas and that, they're just really warming. So, again, it's about if it's a cold day outside and they're coming in, you want them to go, oh, it's nice and cosy in here. It's like putting a blanket around yourself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So you want to create uh, yeah. that. And, and then, then as I said before, you know, this is an opportunity to get up in everybody's nose in a good <laughs> way. And, and it's literally by using things like scented candles and reed diffusers and seasonal aromas like cedar, uh, spruce, cinnamon, pine um, or orange. You know, yeah. your, your, your viewers will be left with a, a fondly fragrant memories overall. Yeah. They'll, they'll have a nice feeling about the house. You know, the house is a house until they make it a home. And if you can make, if you can get it in their mind that this is going to be the a home to them, it's just that you're, you're almost there. Mm -hmm. hundred percent. And actually, one of the properties that really nailed that because it was a big house, Black Eight Side House, as you know, um, Keys just exchanged for that the other day. That's that gone, but they had really lovely big diffusers in all of the rooms and it was like a natural flow just went through every room and all the scents seemed to work with what that room was doing so in the lounge it was kind of like a vibrant smell in the kitchen it was quite floral to oversee the cooking in the bedrooms it was the kind of lavendery vanilla the kind of sleep smells and it yeah. kind of flowed through the house and it really did work it was a really warming feeling going through the property so this is when it comes to this time of year where it's very, very dark in the mornings and it's pretty dark at night pretty quick. So mm -hmm. I tend to say that viewings tend to go from week to week rather than day to day because of this, because most people are at work. And by the time they get out of their work at five o'clock, it's pitch black. Mm -hmm. So what sort of, uh, how could we take advantage or or how could we work with um, with these dark nights? It, you know, should we be amplifying the daylight and how should we be doing that? Absolutely. I mean, with shorter days and the sun's sitting lower in the sky, it makes a big difference because you can't always see in the garden where the sunlight's going to be. So, you know, winter is the time to help your home stay on the bright side, if you like. Um, yeah. Whether it's grey and gloomy outside or it's crisp and clean, I think the things you need to look at are cleaning windows. I know it sounds really daft, but actually it makes a big, big difference because if your windows are clean, you're letting so much natural light in, but you're also letting everyone see out. You've not got mm -hmm. that gloominess. We've got a lot of wind and rain and dust in the air at the moment with the wind, so it does make them dirty looking. Trim back any overshadowing foliage as well in the garden is a really big thing. Um, I actually had a client the other day whose property I was at, beautiful house, but had hedgerow all the way around. My recommendation was trim all of that down. Went to do the pre-portal. The gardener had been, everything was trimmed. It looked like a different house altogether. There was so yeah. much more light coming in, so it's really important that you do that as well. It's a good tip um, as well, especially if you've got, especially if you've got um, um, views out the back garden. For example, I've had it before in, in Pitt and Weem, where you know just over the the hedge was so high you couldn't really see over to the field. Mm -hmm. But there's an open field; it goes right across and away over to the West Braes, and then over to the Firth of Forth. You can see everything. Basically, mm -hmm. when you're standing in the back garden, if that hedge was just trimmed down a bit. So we got yeah. them to trim it down about just about a couple of feet um, in terms of the hedge. And it was still good, a good substantial head size, you know, but the views were absolutely unbelievable in comparison. Mm -hmm. And it made a huge amount of difference in people's minds, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a bungalow. So there's no way you were ever going to get to that top stairs to be able to yeah. see that. So you need to, that, these are the sort of things that you, you need to just be aware of. That's why it's probably good getting an estate agent out to begin with, to actually mm -hmm. ask them what their opinion is first, because it's a fresh pair of eyes. I keep saying to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, you've lived in your house all your years. You know where all the faults are. You know where all the things are. You think you need to decorate and carpet and all the rest of it and put new kitchens in. But when I walk around with a fresh pair of eyes as a, as, as a viewer for the first time, I don't see any of that at all. Mm -hmm. It's difficult sometimes for sellers to see that. You're absolutely right. And so it is good for to be able to give them that advice. Um, but I mean, as well, 
well as like doing the hedges, etc. You know, if you've got your window sills, clean out the frames. You know, we've had a lot of spiders because it's colder, isn't it? So it's about cleaning yep. all that up as well, make it look nice, take away all the kind of shadows that are getting casted on the property. And you want to avoid that because you want it to really gleam and shine yep. and, and be appealing to people. Um, this is a big thing for me as well. Whilst you want your house to be cosy when you're in it, when we're coming to view it, the client's coming to view it, the pictures are getting done, the videography is getting done, open your curtains. I know it sounds really basic, but open the curtains. When you're there, close them, keep yourself warm, but they need to be open. The number of people that put their blinds halfway down their, their window. So when you yeah. actually, and the natural sunlight is coming through that bit and they've just blocked it all off. And they don't realise, actually, when, you know, as, as what you said, Perry, it's like get that blind back up to where it was to let the natural light flow through because you've just blocked all the light out. It's true. And again, it's about making that property look at its best. And when I do my videography work, I'm sure you do the same, Jim. You know, I'm at the property a good 20 minutes before I'm even due to start filming because I want to put... I want to open curtains. I want to lift up blinds. I want to put lights on in all the rooms. I want to put the table lamps Toilet on the bed. Toilet seats down. <laughs> Toilet seats down, bath mats away, all those kind of things. Because actually you want it to look at its best. And these are the things people notice. You don't as a seller because you live in it all the time and it's beautiful to you. And they are beautiful homes. But yeah. you're trying to capture someone else's imagination. They don't Absolutely. want to see your clutter. Yeah. <laughs> so it's important to do that as well. So yeah, get those blinds up. Um, expose as much glass and light as you can makes a big big difference i was in an apartment yesterday saw the original seller it's a property that we've sold within the building often and it was very dark i went in the new couple of basically lots of metal lots of glass lots of light flicker it was like a completely different property altogether completely transformed in a two-year window just by doing yeah. those things and taking on board that feedback so important to do that um, again, mirrors are a really good thing. Mirrors transpose a room and transfer it into a different way. You can have them in a hallway and they don't look right, and then you can put them in a front room and the front room completely changes. So really important to relocate mirrors if you can. Get as much re reflecting light as you can as well. And also, if you position it right and you can actually get the outside bouncing off the mirror as well, gives a false yeah. illusion of space as well. So that's a big thing. Um, Polish metal and glass if you have it though, because there's nothing worse, especially if you've got if you've got like the metal light switches and they're all sticky fingered, doesn't oh, look great. Yeah. No, it doesn't look great <laughs> at all, does it? It just gives that impression of dirt. And then when people <laughs> see that impression of dirt, even though they've no mentioned it, it's subconscious, it just sits in. And then it then then what happens is the mind focuses on things like, is there any other place it's dirty? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just an it's just an automatic yeah. thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's, it's like everything, isn't it? You see one thing and you go, oh, what else is there then? You start to look for the negatives, don't you, rather than just accepting the positive things that you're experiencing. It's the, it's the old adage. My father used to tell me every single time, when you go to see a car, if you, if you find one fault, there's another two faults that you can't see. Yeah, it's 100% true. So really important with that, if you do have a lot of metal and glass, which is always great, make sure that it is cleaned. Um Ceramic surfaces as well is a big thing. You know, people when they walk in, it's a natural, and I did it yesterday. It's a natural thing. If you go in and you see a ceramic top, you want to touch it. So yeah. I immediately went in and was like touching it. So what you don't want is for someone to do that and go, oh, that's all sticky from last night's dinner. <laughs> so this is quite really important. important. I mean, Jane's actually said it on here, um, and the fact that uh, you know, and and Jane is a buyer because she's just uh, she's just offered on a house the other now. Um, at this time of year and uh, so she says you know the things like a toilet seat, the toilet seats down is a must it's a pet hate I know it, some people it's like oh, I'm not really bothered about it mm -hmm. but for other people it can put them off remember that's your buyer you've got to make sure you don't give them any reason to actually have any negative feeling about it at all same with things like shampoo around the bath mm -hmm. you know where it's just dripped down the side of the the container and um, you know toothpaste Stuff like that, you know, bits of toothpaste lying about, cleaning products in the bathroom on view, um, you know, all over the place. And just, mm -hmm. I usually, typically, I usually tuck them behind the system or I put them at the side where they're out of view. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'll do because they're, you, you can't get rid of everything, but mm -hmm. at least when you take a photograph or you do a video, you'll not see them in that. So it's a classic, it's a classic trick that a, a videographer like us would do.
Yeah, I think as well, you know, Jane does make good points about that in a bathroom and it does put people off. But actually, if anyone's out there, you know, some of this can seem quite overwhelming and you can think, oh, my God, this is so stressful trying to sell my house, all these things that I need to be doing. Easy. It's pretty simple. And actually, see if you go to our YouTube channels, go to our website. We've got loads of podcasts on there. One of them that we've actually got on there is about decluttering. A second one that we have on there as well is getting viewing ready. And literally, it's like gives you top tips how you can be ready in 20 minutes. Um, yeah, if you're so, ready in about 20 minutes, yeah, and that's right. Yeah, really important that you look at those types of things, and it's just little top tips to make it as stress-free as possible. But you're right, Jane, certainly having those things around is not great. Um, so, yeah, make sure everything's clean. Make sure worktops are wiped down, washed down. Make them shiny. Here's my thing, is proper lighting in a house. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing more inviting right on a cold winter's evening than a doorway that glows with a welcoming aura and the, mm -hmm. the promise of a homely and heartening hug uh, you know but it's not it's not the only way to seduce your buyers with the power of light and um, mm -hmm. you know inside for example swap out cold white bulbs for warm soft tone replacements now i usually flip it around the other way when it comes to summer because it's lighter outside so therefore you don't need it but if you you have to play to the season that you've got at hand so that you know the other thing as well they're often missing an element well pun intended, no pun intended uh, for elevating that cold feeling room uh, for a well for example look at a dark or unlit corners uh, use a floor lamp or a you know a, a, a table lamp or anything like that to shine some light uh, that can take you um with that can you can take with you when you move so mm -hmm. you're, you're you're just highlighting a corner so it's not looking so dark when anybody looks into it but you when you walk into a room especially sometimes that some of the rooms that you walk into now don't even have a center light anymore yeah. So you have to take advantage of using, you know, wall lights and you have to take advantage of using other lights in the room. So have a right balance of the lights, mm -hmm. but don't make it too sterile. And, you know, give it nice, cosy, warm inviting, especially this time of year. Mm -hmm. That's going to play to the market, definitely. Jim, and, you're making me laugh now because you're being all posh. What, how, when did it become a centre light? What happened to, can you put the big light on? <laughs> <laughs> when did it it a describe it, the, the, the light in the centre. That's it, really. Um, the big light. I, I, I don't have them here. <laughs> I don't have a center light here, hence the reason why I talk about that. Um, it's off center. Um, so, especially in some of the ex local authority houses, a lot of the ex local authority houses put the put the light closer to the window. And the reason behind that was when you were getting changed or anything like that, because there was no such thing as real big curtains, it was net curtains. When you're getting changed, you were actually getting changed behind the light, and the light actually took any so nobody could see in. That's why they were at, that, that's why they were put to the front of the window. The actual lights themselves in the in the local authority houses. Um, mm -hmm. So that was an old thing. It, it was way back. So some people still have them because the disruption to move them is actually quite um, quite encumbering. Um, so fairy lights and plain soft white look great in a jar is a classic example. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you see it in restaurants, don't you? On the yeah. tabletops when people put them in, in wine bottles and jars and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good one, a, jazz a, a, a glass vase or strung over a mantelpiece or around the mirror. It's not mm -hmm. just for Christmas, remember. It can mm -hmm. actually look in any really good in any season. Mm -hmm. I, something Usually. I saw yesterday as well that I've never seen before, the way this property was, it had kind of eaves in the lounge area and they'd fully decorated. Everything was fine, yeah. all the metal. But what they had at the join at the top of the window at the wall um, was actually, it looked like little stickers, but they were like little diamonds. And there was only mm -hmm. maybe about a dozen of them trickling down. But what an effect it gave. Really simple yeah. and cheap to do as well. But it was just fantastic. I've never seen it before. But for lighting up those little corners where there's not a lot of light coming in, it was just a good way of playing on the light. Oh, that would have been a good one for putting on the Facebook page, isn't it? I, should have, should have, yeah. Remember that next time when you see something like that, that's a really good tip to actually well, just cross on other people. Would you see anyway? <laughs> of course, you are. yeah, yeah, of course, you are. yeah. I, I, I heard about that one. Um, so the other one as well, definitely use timers for outdoor lighting and indoor lamps to come on when the when the sunlight actually fades. It creates a magical winter welcome uh, every single day. I, I would say uh, now. It's really extraordinary how lighting can transform the atmosphere and the impression of your home, both inside and outside. Mm -hmm. Better still, it can all be done in a single afternoon. It's not difficult to do this. And you can get loads of ideas off Pinterest and Instagram 
every single time. There's, there's loads of content out there, isn't there, for lighting and that? Absolutely, 100%. The one thing I would say to people, and you, we touched on this in, in previous discussions, Jim, as well, and you mentioned it earlier there just briefly, but again, don't panic that you're having to do these things at an expense to yourself. Buy things that you like, that will fit a corner, that will then move with you to the new house. So it's not an extravagance yeah. that you're you're spending that you don't need to have. It's something that will be useful when you move on to the next place anyway. So I think that's really important for people to appreciate and understand as well. And don't wait, don't wait till you get your new house. Mm -hmm. It's often, I've seen it every single time when we're on the subject of that, how people don't buy stuff. They go, I'll buy it when I get my next new, when I get my new house. When I find my new house, I'm going to buy that, but I'm going to get it anyway. Well, get it now then, because it's brand it. new. It's brand new. It just gives people an, 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 a good impression when they walk mm -hmm. in the door for your buyers. Why would you not get it now then? It's that sort of thing, delayed gratification thing. Well, get it now because you're going to get it anyway for your next house. Yeah. Get it now, yeah. use it now, and use it to your unique advantage. I would agree completely. No, we've, ta we've talked a lot about what's in the house, but yeah, we have, to, we have to make magic happen in the gardens as well. So what's your thoughts on that one, Jim? You're not really into the garden much. <laughs> you know what? It's the thing that's often most neglected. Is. Definitely. The garden is always neglected. People are like, you know, it's winter, I'm not going to do anything with it. It's no it's no growing over. It's always wet, so I'm never going to be able to cut the grass and stuff like that. But you have to look at that golden opportunity to do it. And mm -hmm. I mean, soggy leaves are covering your lawn. Get them off because they can destroy your lawn for one thing. Definitely. You know, we're, we're, we're blocking out all the light and the oxygen to the actual grass itself. Mm -hmm. uh, perennial snoozing below ground as well. And the bare branches on the trees and gardens are really, uh, really at their best in the winter. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really mean all is lost. Because everyone else's house is like that as well. It's going on. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if you use photographs in a, in a, or, you know, anything from summertime, how out of place your property is going to look against everyone else's? It's not going to disrupt anybody. It's going to give everybody the impression that maybe this house has been in the market a lot longer than we think mm -hmm. because it's True. not in the season. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a good idea as well. And we're going to talk about that. It's some tricks that, you know, you can get pops of colour in the garden, cheer up the look of it so that your buyers feel a bit more delight when they're coming through the garden. Um, but actually you can benefit it throughout the year anyway. So it's nice to be able to do things like that. Um, so what, what do those kind of things look like, Jim? Oh God, garden furniture, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See the amount of time people just leave their garden furniture all broken and haggled in the corner, you know, in the corner of the garden. It's like, you know, it, it genuinely is the one that's most neglected. It's, it's a room. And I mean an outside room, it's neglected the most as the garden when it comes to this time of year. But it's often the one it could make or break your house sale. Yeah. You know, just the fact if it's nice and spacious, if it's clean and tidy, the garden furniture, you know, can, and you know, if your garden furniture can withstand the season, it, dress it with winterproof textiles like blankets, mm -hmm. cushions, outdoor rugs. Um, mm -hmm. String some lighting overhead with a dash of wonder, for a dash of wonderland. Yeah. You can even get the fire pits next to it as well. So it just gives that distinct impression. Again, it's like, I've not got a fire pit. Go and buy one. Take it to your next house. Yeah, you Take it away. You're not leaving it. But it gives a real good impression, especially if your garden's a wow factor of your house. And you're thinking, I'm going to wait till spring or I'm going to wait till summer so everybody can see my garden. Well, just take advantage of it now. Everybody will see your garden for that reason. So you talked you talked about the twigs in that as well, and I think that's a real important way of putting some light into the garden because the trees look bare just now. So people are thinking, yeah. like, oh, it doesn't look attractive. Rather than lights around, it just makes a difference. Hanging wee lanterns for them, things you can take on, like you say, to your next house that you can use again. It's not things that you're. It's the fairy to lights to. as well, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen people with fairy lights in their garden all year round. Yeah, and it does. And look it nice. really, it, it really looks nice. Just you know, just the typical white light. That's it. You mm -hmm. don't need anything coloured. Coloured obviously gives the impression it's going to be Christmas. But if you just do the white lights, it's really, really nice. A lot of a lot of your beer gardens and stuff will use them in the in the pubs and clubs and stuff like that. So so I definitely think that's a golden opportunity to take advantage of that. But remember to obviously sweep up um, and, and rake up leaves as well. If, if even if your lawn has been is even if your lawn has given up for a, for a year, your garden will feel more manageable and bigger and yeah. as a result of that. It's one of Billy's least favourite jobs. We've got a really big tree that's in a neighbour's garden. And when the winds come, maybe mid-October, start of November, 
the garden every Sunday is out there with a sucker upper that crunches them all and we put them in a bin and you have to do it because otherwise the garden just looks a mess all the time. You can come down and do mine, I'm right next to the Glen. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, I think yeah, I've, got a lot more. I've just got I've got a woman forest overhung in me. <laughs> <laughs> and they just shed everything and the whole garden stuff. Yeah, you know, it, it's covered. Uh, and so I, I get it straight away how, how important it is to do that. And mm -hmm. obviously, you know, trim back some of the bushes. I mean, I know the summer and the in the autumn and that is obviously given us an opportunity to do it. But everything slows down in terms of its growing. So there is an opportunity just to trim it back a wee bit more within reason. Um, and actually just get your house, your garden looking really, really nice. Uh, treat the gardens, treat the front garden, especially if it's a couple of evergreens like box cones um, or or balls um, by the front door. Um, mm. Or even, oh, even some, some floral arrangements are in season, uh, you know, by the porch or something like that. Something that looks really, really nice. Yeah. I don't know if you've got any ideas about that, Perry. I do. Um, actually, my property has it now. We we did exactly that. Um, you There's can a surprise. Buy... I know. <laughs> <laughs> you Would can you buy take people around your house and tell them what they should do? I should do. This is the example. <laughs> um, but actually, like we've got wreaths, and you can buy wreaths all year round. I always thought just like wreaths was a Christmas thing. They don't have to be. You know, in the springtime, for instance, I've got one that's just a wreath full of tulips. Um, it's artificial. I can put it out every year. It looks really nice. You get Halloween ones now. You get winter ones. You get spring ones. You get all different ones. But even things like this time of year, like poncietas, I love because you've got that real rich redness in the leaves and they all look really yeah. nice. So if you've got like a little kind of vegetable or porch or entranceway, that's a nice way of sprucing up a bit of colour. And instantly people associate that with a happy time, don't they? Because it's associated with Christmas and Christmas is Your typical home and Christmas plant, isn't it? Yeah, and Christmas yeah. is home and family and all it's all that warm feeling that you get, isn't it? So they're definitely important to do. Makes a big difference. But actually, like you say, if you've got even at the moment I've got like pots with little conifers in them, wrapping lights around them as well, like mini Christmas trees, just things like that that just make it nice at your doorstep as well and give it a bit of a boost. It makes it different from the rest of the street. I think the one thing it stands out as well is not to forget the wildlife. You know, the feeding station encourages the visits from birds and perhaps you'll be lucky enough to attract a robin redbreast um, for a, mm -hmm. really an enchanting seasonal scene. Mm -hmm. it's, when, people, when people look out the back garden and at your front garden, because they will look out the windows at some mm -hmm. point in time, I think the feeding stations are definitely a big plus, aren't they? Massively so. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I've got a feeding station on steroids in the garden. So actually, I didn't want just one of the ones you could buy at the shops. So Billy actually went and got me a fence post and put yeah. brackets on it, brackets on it, and it's got a diamante fix on the top, and it's got like six feeding points. But that's all about the birds and bringing them to the garden. But actually, one of the things that I was want to speak about when we talked about the leaves as well, again, really important actually, if you want to leave a certain amount of leaves in your garden, do, but know where they are and leave them there constantly. Yeah. If you're always wanting to clean, clean up quick, don't leave it for weeks on end, because actually at this time of year as well, a lot of hedgehogs go in there and start to hibernate so yeah. if you're like picking them up and sucking them up with your choppers and stuff like that you need to be really careful so you know it's not just about the birds part of the garden and the, the nature that's coming in you've got to think about the bigger picture as well squirrels as well we've got squirrel yep. feeding stations especially because we're next to the glen the amount of yep. squirrels that come into our garden and the cats just sit at the window mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, just, it, just, it just teases them yeah. <laughs> but but they've, they've actually learned not to go near the squirrels. They're no fine. They'll not they'll mm -hmm. not chase them or anything like that. They'll just sit and watch them now. They've actually yeah. just got so used to them and they'll just sit and watch them. Um mm -hmm. and every now and again they'll 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 almost it's like the squirrels come and goad them and, and deliberately do it and, and actually invite them to chase them deliberately. And then it's they just run up the tree and then the cat can't <laughs> get the cat can't get them. Because the squirrel knows damn fine that that's the case, but the cat's like the cats love it, love the cheats. Mm -hmm. They just yeah, love the fact right. of the interaction. So it's not a fact that they're, they're they're wanting to get them, it's the fact that they just like they just like the fun. They're just playing, exactly. One of the other things that I saw recently as well, and I know that they still do this uh, Bro uh, Bridge Alpaca Farm. One of the things that they do, so when they the alpacas shed their fleece, of course. They actually sell bags of it, so you can put them into your bird feeders, so the birds yeah. can come along and take them for nesting. They're really sweet, actually, and a great way of doing that as well. So it's little things like really that, because a lot of people yeah. really are, are more 
into gardens and nature um, and so the focus on those types of things and if they can see your garden has that purpose as well you're ticking another big box in someone's head isn't it that positive vibe that your garden's giving off yeah definitely it's going to start moving mm -hmm. from the crowd and that's what you want to do right yeah. here we go this is the, the i'm going to ask oh. you this final question <laughs> final question everybody's it's on the tip of everybody's tongue christmas yeah. decorations yes or no Oh, that that question's coming on up up a lot at the moment. I can see how the hell fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big question just now, though, and we've got lots of clients asking. You know, we're the week of run up to Christmas. We have got a lot of videography taking place and photos taking place next week, and they're saying, "I want to put my tree up. Should I? Should I not?" What's your thought, Jim? Yes or no? No, I mean, I know people love Christmas and they love celebrating it, but if you're selling your house. I genuinely believe it. You shouldn't be putting up your, you shouldn't put up until the photographs and the videography is done, and impossibly. But if it's overpowering in the room and that, you know, you either want to sell your house or you don't. Yeah. And and this time of year is a great advantage um, for for people. But there's some there's some properties that are actually maybe second homes or deceased estates or something mm -hmm. like that. So so people are actually still selling anyway. So it doesn't it doesn't make any difference because they won't be decorated at all. So there is advantages mm -hmm. that way. But, you know, if you love to celebrate Christmas by, by putting up decorations, the good news is you really don't have to give them up to sell your home. But there are some things really, I would say, to bear in mind. Yeah. So let's have a wee think about them then. Rather than a massive tree that blocks the window, um, like, for example, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Chase does, that's a no-no that eclipses the sun, basically. <laughs> and blocks out the, the light for the whole of the room. Yeah. Uh, really, I think, consider something a bit smaller and more elegant. Uh, and mm -hmm. for a, maybe that Christmas corner that you had, that's the, there's the corner. The corner that you're wanting to light up, stick mm -hmm. the Christmas tree in there. And exactly. that lights up that corner perfectly. Uh, and it gives buyers plenty of space to, to still walk around, I would say. You yeah, know, I what, agree. What, what one could you think of? For me, and this is just my own personal taste. I'm not big on multicolored lights. I, I kind of like the one natural thing, otherwise you're playing with too much. So having multicolored yep. lights and decorations all over the home, it can take the focus away from your home. Um, the rooms and the character sometimes can be lost and people can't see past it. So it's really important to absolutely be maybe a bit more stringent and stricter with yourself. Don't go all out. Um, go for some Danish highs or some focus on natural woods or natural tones um, and just like the yeah. soft one coloured light, flashing lights in all different colours. It's just really yeah. off-putting for people. It doesn't look great. It's a negative for me. And every time you walk in the room, Santa goes, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, and then after a time, it gets really annoying for people. <laughs> Santa keeps doing that, or or they do the bar humbug. <laughs> yeah, it's that. It's, these are these are the sort of things that I would definitely say. Be just be very very careful. Be yeah. very careful what you're doing. You really don't want it because if you're going, if you've got a Santa that sets off every single time, or or jingle bells that sets off every single time somebody walks in a door, or a, yeah. you know some sort of sensor, it's like I wouldn't be putting that out at this time of year. Definitely no. not. Until until the view, you know, take it away, switch it off or something like that. When the viewer's there, you know, put it back on when they're away. And, you yeah. know, fair enough, it, it works very, very well. But I would definitely say just, just you know, go canny. Go canny with if, if, if everybody understands that expression. Just don't. Yeah. I, I know people like to go overboard. Um, they like to just go right to the hill. Some people mm. love Christmas. Like, yeah. for example, Lucy. I'll give Lucy a shout at Lucy Noonan. <laughs> we were talking and says, she says, what are you going to be doing for Christmas? And I went, working. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, oh, no, I love Christmas. I'll be fully engrossing it. And she was like, told me everything that she's going to be doing. Um, and, you know, that's the sort of thing. But but again, when you get into the January and February, and that, this will all be cleared up and cleaned out. So, you know, Christmas will be over. We'll be in January. We'll be in February. We'll be in March because they're all still winter season. Yeah. So it's these other things. And I'll tell you the classic example of the winter season is when you get to round about March, that's when it starts to snow. Mm -hmm. and so you, you, that's when as videographers and as photographers, um, we have to we have to just pick the right days. It's almost getting the sun and the moon and the stars to align at the same time to get that done right. right. So yeah, 100%. Christmas decorations, you could do that. The, you know, be, just be careful of that. 
uh, you'll give your photographs a longer shelf life as well, way into the March, um, mm -hmm. if you if you get them taken without the decorations uh, to make sure, because all your stuff will come down after Christmas anyway. Um, and and if you're watching this right now and you're catching up on this, you know, when we're in January, February, March, then then you're fine. Christmas is now over. You're still going on. We're still putting our property on the market. We're still going for it. But then the other things we've got to watch now for is, is the colder because it does tend to snow more proportionally in the February, March and almost into April uh, point. So they, these are the times where we have to just sort of time it. So give your estate agent plenty of time to take photographs, to do videography, to do everything else. So I would, I would say commit earlier rather than later to getting on with this so it gives them a longer timeline to get everything put together because it's going to be more difficult at this time of year in the winter season um, and that doesn't mean i tell you what i'll just wait till summer because summer is a completely different market yeah. spring is a completely different market as well the, it could be the economy could be in a completely different shape mm -hmm. the buyers could be you know there could be less buyers at that point in time there could be an abundance of property coming onto market at that point in time as well in spring and summer mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen to the property market you don't you can't really forecast the economy is out of your situ out of your hands as well the inflation's out of your hands as well you don't know what's going to happen with that we don't know if base rates are going to move up even more I mean, they yeah. have been frozen recently. Again, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're still at 5.25. You know, so if anybody's listening to this, we'll now know two or three months from now if that's actually going up or come down. I've got yeah. a funny feeling they're just going to stabilise at that level and just stay I at that level. And I definitely think that's probably going to be the case. But so. this is when we're into this time, when we're into the early new year now. Mm -hmm. What do we do from there? That's mm -hmm. that's the key here. Give your photographer more time. It gets darker in the morning, so it doesn't get the light is very restricted during these times. Therefore, they have to catch it, especially if you're in a coastal village. If you're in a coastal village and you're next to the sea, we want to make sure the sea's in and the tide's yeah. in at the time because really you important. don't want to turn down and go, Look at that beautiful rocks and seaweed. <laughs> it's yeah. like literally that's what you'll get. Look at that beautiful rocks and seaweed. Um, it's a good point you make, actually, because I, I don't think people, viewers, listeners, sellers, buyers, when they see our videos, actually see everything that goes on in the backgrounds. You know, when we're creating our diary slots, we have to go in and see when is the no tide idea. in, when is the tide out. You know, we have to plan all those things. We can't just like create a slot in a day and say, right, we're going to come at three o'clock on this day. We have to do all this. I'm religious at that. Yeah. I'm religious at that. The first thing I look at when an appointment's in my diet for a coastal village is is the tide going to be in and and it's like the, the tides are going to be in and we're moving it to when the tide's in the tide needs to be in that's what yeah. people want to see they don't want to see an abundance of rocks and seaweed and everything else and um, fair enough you've got a gold sandy beach and the tide goes out fantastic yeah. then mm -hmm. we'll let the tide go out um mm -hmm. but you really do want and then you have to have a clear day you have to have a really clear day so if yeah. if, the, if if it's overshadowed or over over uh, shadowed with the you know the sun's blocked or anything like that and you can't really see enough and it's just gray skies it's like it's often not the best day to do videography or uh, you know photographs are fine because you can actually change the sky that's fine that's okay to do but you can't really do that on a video so you have to be very very good at what you're doing and you have to literally get the moon and the sun and the stars and the planets to align all at the same time in order to make this magic moment happen and that magic moment really consists of about 10 minutes, that's it. It does. You, 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 One of your quotes, Jim, that you often say is slow down to speed up. And it's really paramount to do that in certain situations and not be carried away on the wave of what's occurring at that moment. Yeah. I had a client, it was exactly the same. I was planning to do the videography work. They really wanted the house on the market ASAP. They wanted that pre-portal out there. I was going that day. It was raining. And I said, there is honestly, You've got such a beautiful garden, the light that's going to come in the house. There is no point in me doing a video today. I won't show the house off to it best. Planned it for the next day because the forecast is better. I went the next day, did the video, client phoned me up after they watched it. They're like, oh my God, you were right. It looked fantastic. The garden was amazing. It was what I wanted to do that day. And just that one day of difference made such a huge difference because that's the thing that the viewer is watching and seeing for the first time. Absolutely. That's the impression that they I, have. I you only get one chance to make a good first impression although you can't get a second chance if you do what we do <laughs> yeah. um however 
when you get that, you're absolutely right. I, I can't disagree with that at all. There's often days that I'm scheduled in to do a video and I'll just phone the client up and say, I'm not coming around today. It is absolutely appalling that weather. There's no way I'm going to be doing a video a video in that weather because I want your pro property to shine. And often, maybe and even in the afternoon or even the next day, the sun comes out out of nowhere. And I'm like, right, I'm rounding out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know I'm in my car. I'm in my car. I'm driving right now again. No one, no end. You got a key box? Yeah, I've got a key box. Great. I'll do it now. Yeah. And it's I've, much I've that sort of thing. And and weekends, well, weekends are classic for that. Usually, yeah. um, the best opportunity is weekends on a Saturday or a Sunday morning because it's not. I, I think I think the day wakes up every single day with bright sunshine. I think that's what happens. And then as everybody wakes up and everything starts to get switched on, the clouds start to overcast as a result of that. So mm -hmm. I think the mornings are the best opportunity to take advantage of that, especially if you've got a south facing, um, because you don't want it straight on in the afternoon, because then when you ban the camera around, everything else goes dark around about it with the white balance. Therefore, yeah. you want it in the morning or you want it towards more or less towards the afternoon if you're south mm -hmm. facing. So you can catch that, so you can get the, mm -hmm. so you can get the best view, especially if a view at the front is absolutely the, is the is the knockout view. The that's the money shot, definitely, yeah. and especially if you're on an elevated back garden, and that's the money shot as well over the rooftops, mm -hmm. um, and you're sitting there in the sun all day long, and you could actually paint that picture. Mm -hmm. Nobody buys your house for the fact it's got three or four bedrooms. Everybody else's house has got that as well. Yeah. They will buy it for what it can give them, where everything is, what lifestyle they can appreciate as a result of that. That okay. is why they're buying your house. And that is why videography is so important. And that is why talking about the area is more important than generally talking about the house and the fact it's got four bedrooms and it's semi-detached. After all, they've clicked on that for that reason anyway. Tell them something that they don't know. Where is it in proximity to everything else? Mm -hmm. Where is the airport in case it's a second home or a holiday home? Where is where you know where is the schools? Where is the local parks for the children? Where is the where is the bistros, the cafes, the restaurants? You can mm -hmm. tell I'm getting into this now, eh? <laughs> I'm start a pre photo. Welcome to the pre photo. The photo <laughs> Welcome to the personal property tour. But it's true, isn't it? It's true. It's people it will buy it for what it can give them, not what it is. And, you know, you've hit the nail right on the head and it takes a full circle to what we started this conversation about. So that particular property that was on with the other agent for nine months was a prime example where the videography work had to be perfect because that was a differentiator. It had this beautiful countryside view right across the first. You could see across to Berwick, Edinburgh, everything that you can from there. I was due to go on the Friday to do the video. It turned up on the Friday. It was misty. Couldn't see anything. I was like, I'm not doing the video today. Went on the Saturday. It was exactly the same on the Saturday. Went back on the Sunday. Three times I went to the property before I could actually film the, the video. So getting the videography right made all the difference because now it sold in excess of what it was listed for before. Well, look at the example of the series. The mm -hmm. one in the series we did recently. It was on the market by another agent for about six months. Mm -hmm. No no offers, no nothing like that at all. We took it on within three weeks. Gone. Sold. Yeah. And it's like, and, 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 and I always think to myself, how on earth did the other agent wasn't able to do that? How, how were they able to? Do, I just can't get my head around that. What's I just, I mean, naturally, you just think everybody runs the same system, but they don't. On the face of it, it looks like it because everybody goes, Oh, I can give you a free market appraisal. Oh, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. And it all sounds so samey. But the engine that runs the whole system and what happens in the background and without the things that you subtle differences that you don't notice and you will never notice are the fundamentals that make the difference about getting that offer over the line and actually getting somebody to view the property is like night and day, definitely. And it just it just it astounds me. But every single time it works, realignment of prices works. You know, using a new, a new system and a new retargeting technology, using digital marketing strategies, using proper negotiators, proper nego just because you're called a sales negotiator, it doesn't mean to say you know what you're doing. It's just a title. Let's be honest. If that was the case, 
how on earth did I manage to buy 20 properties for my portfolio in the last couple of years? And the majority of them were below the home report value. Wait a minute. That was a boom market. How on earth did you manage to do that? Because the sales negotiators really weren't sales negotiators at all. Mm-hmm. Run circles around them, definitely, every single time. And that's what that's how it's done. But then the great thing is, this is like poacher fun gamekeeper, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, really? Because I know how to do it from a, a, a buyer's point of view and how to negotiate against an estate agent. Therefore, I just flip that around now and I'd use it as the advantage of I know how to negotiate as an estate agent with a buyer now because I know exactly how they put the buyer's thinking and mm-hmm. how they think in the psychology as well. And this is what we teach every single time to all the, all the people that work with us for that reason, to understand the buyer's needs, to understand where they are, to understand what they want out of the, what they want out of this win-win deal. And when you can create a win-win deal, that's when the magic happens. That's when people offer you amounts that you think, how on earth did I manage to do that? Mm -hmm. And yet no one else did that. The other agent couldn't do that. How did we manage to do that? And I think we just take it for granted that we make the magic happen. It's important, isn't it? Because you're you're on a journey with someone and I think that's the key thing. So for me, you know, if you're watching this, if you're hoping to move in the spring, it's absolutely vital that you get some good advice. Yeah. Do your homework, understand what your agent can offer. It, what's black and white on paper? Doesn't it always deliver the same? So reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to have a discussion with you. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. I'll be honest, if you're hoping to move in the spring, you'll be lucky. You because need to go because it, yeah, it takes at least about four or five months, maybe six months to actually get over the line. So if you're putting your house in the market now, um, whatever month it is, um, you've got whether it's January, February, March, whether it's December, uh, you know, whether, whether whatever any month is, I think you just have to forecast ahead. It could be six months before you actually get get yourself over the line and get get a new house. Um, mm-hmm. It could be as much as six months. So if you you know, I think I think speaking, my advice, and we're just finishing here. My advice before we, before I finish, my best thing I can tell anyone is get the estate agent involved earlier than you think. That's the best advice I can give someone out there right now. Get the estate agent involved earlier than you think, even if it's a year before, even if it's six months before, even if it's a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks before you think you're going to do it, just do it now because they can give you a huge amount of knowledge and expertise and information based on what they've done. And remember, they've done, well, effectively, I've done thousands of transactions. I've done mm-hmm. thousands of house sales. And that's what gives you the knowledge and expertise for that reason. And not just that, I've managed to get everybody from A to B in the shortest, most cost-effective way possible, but the least stress involved overall. And so that's where we'll end up. Definitely. You're absolutely right, Perry. You know, for people, just contact us now. Get your job. Hey, we'll tell you. Honestly, we'll tell you. If you're if you're if you're not ready, if we think you're not ready to sell now, or we think you shouldn't be selling now, we'll tell you not just now. It's not the time for you. You know, you know I've done that in the past then. We have lots of people where everybody's going, wait a minute, you were meant to come here to sell my house and now you've talked about it. Why? And I'm like, because it's not the time for you to sell for that reason, that reason, and that reason. The time for you to sell will be when that point comes along and this point comes along, and then that is probably the time that you should be selling. Other than that, wait. It's a waiting game. Don't get too quick to do it. But generally, get your estate involved sooner rather than later. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, Perry. If anybody else later on please feel free to contact us direct you can message us direct on these posts or you can stick something in the comments and we'll come back to you as well until next time guys it's bye-bye from us bye take care